invested in. And so I think as part of trying to change American culture, smart people uh, that I disagree with, but again, they're smart people. They want to push the conversation of the country in a direction that I'm not comfortable with. And football is getting caught up in that. Football is uh, the embodiment of American male establishment. It's highly masculine. It's a sport for men, played by men. Uh, <clears throat> it, it, And so I, I think football is under attack. And... Uh, you know, I think that people want to remove it as the greatest sports cultural influence in America. And I think this, there's been a process and a plan put in place that has been going on for several years, uh, but now people are starting to see it. And so the whole conversation about football is just so distorted and, I think the story about concussions exaggerated and not told in proper context. I think there's hyper, hyper focus on whatever negativity is related to football in terms of domestic violence is an American problem. It's not a football problem. And we've somehow reduced it to football. And so I look at what Why is this happening? Again, I think... Football's under attack, and I think that uh, this highly, this masculine society, this male first society that we have in America, people are trying to restructure it. That there's, uh, and again, not all of it is negative, but I, I think the progressive movement. Uh, is anti-football. And I think the progressive movement uh, wants some of these masculine tent poles for American culture pulled down. And uh, football is, is the most masculine. It's, it's, it, and, and it has such an important place in America, I think people want to change that. You know, I, I, I'm going to interrupt you, and I'm just going to tell you this. So at our site, I just assigned one of our writers, Emily Kaplan, who lives in Chicago. I said, I would like you to find the most dangerous neighborhood in Chicago, and I want you to go to the high school there, and I want you to talk to the football coach, and I want you to talk to the players, and I want you to talk to the families and say – what role does football have here? Is football important? Does football really matter to everybody here in this community? Is it just simply an after-school thing, a diversion to the gangs and everything like that? So Emily has been there. She's doing some reporting. And the game last week got canceled because one of the players on the team that she was covering got shot six times, sitting on his stoop in front of his house. And they were afraid if they played the game, there would be some retribution. And I said to myself, now, this is really serious. And this coach who she's dealing with is trying to save kids' lives right now. Yeah, He's trying to save kids' lives. And one of the things that Emily is looking into, and I don't know the answer yet, what would happen to these kids? And I'm not saying that football is some messiah. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that I think there are a lot of things that you have to look at more than just if you feel if this is a bad activity for the long-term health of this child, and I'm not convinced that it is, but there are other parts of this activity that also must be measured and must be considered before you say that football is bad. Peter, you've knocked it out of the park because... Now, again, I'm just going to tell you where I started. Dad didn't graduate high school. Mother was a factory worker. My parents divorced when I was young, about four or five years old. Me, my mom, and my brother started out in the inner city, in the hood, little bitty apartment uh, in the hood. Again, I told my brother 
started playing football first. I fell in love with football going to the practices. My mother eventually takes a second job at a grocery store because our house got our apartment got broken into and we moved to a working class suburb. Not a rich neighborhood, but a working class suburb. Factory workers and intact family. We move into an apartment there. Football is the reason why. Again, you're talking to someone that didn't know anything about college. No one in my family had gone off to college. Football is the reason why my eyes were open. Like, oh, there's more opportunities in this world than what I was even remotely aware of. Football was the only way I was going to probably go to college. No one was paying for me to go to college. And then, not just my story, but the my friends and the evolution of boys to men that I've seen over the last... I go to Ball State at 18. I'm now 49. That's 31 years. I've seen 18-year-old boys come out of some of the... One of my best friends shot in Detroit. The only reason why we got him as a recruit, because he got shot in Detroit uh, before his senior year of high school. He was a Big Ten recruit, came to Ball State because he got shot. This kid carried an Uzi when we were at Ball State. I didn't know it until we got into a scrap with someone. He pops the trunk of his car and brings out an Uzi, and I'm like, holy cow. This is this kid at 19, 20 years old. I know him now at 49, 50. He's one of the greatest dads, one of the greatest husbands, one of the greatest It's a good thing he lives. Yes, one of the his he's got a son that's playing football in the uh at Syracuse. He's got a daughter that's a honor roll student at Michigan State. Successful 30-year This is a wonderful human being that I saw evolve through football. I could cite story after story of ki- of kids wouldn't have gone to school if it wasn't for football. Wasn't interested in education if it wasn't for football. Football is a part of people's journey to civilization, evolution, and it transforms. It allows people to transform themselves, helps them transform, and it's an ugly process. And so people from uh, that have no uh, interaction with the inner city, no interaction with poor people, maybe well-intentioned, uh, great liberal people, but just don't know where people's journey starts and how ugly it might be. And again, I get in trouble for saying, look, I- I'm pro Greg Hardy getting a second, third, fourth chance. People get upset with me about that. It's because again, his journey started in a trailer park. And so it's it's not going to be as pretty as some of my Can friends. Can you imagine how Charles Haley would be treated today on Twitter? Charles Haley would be assassinated yes. today. He would never make it. He would never make it. I mean, and look, I'm no fan of Greg Hardy. Yeah. Okay. And I don't, I probably would never sign him in a million years if I were an owner. But I do believe that if you look at the background of a lot of people, you're going to see incredible growth to even get to the point where they are. Thank you. You know, this is what, and so. When when I look at American society, we've taken away the draft and sending people to the military because that was part of I'm sorry that was part of the man making part of society the process. I look at football. You you go into these inner cities. There's no fathers around. Who's the father? The coach. Who the assistant coaches? Who are the people instilling values that pay off 10, 15 years later. You may not see the immediate impact. And so, again, football and the people that are involved in it, and all sports for the most part, but particularly in football, they're religious and they're conservative. And uh, if you have you ever seen the documentary Undefeated? No. Guy in Memphis, white dude in his 40s. I, I've heard in, of it. Yeah. In Memphis, goes to one of the worst ghettos in Memphis and starts coaching high school football and transforms lives. Religious guy, conservative guy, down in the trenches working with people in a real way through football. And they they show you right there in the documentary a kid that sits there and tell he's he's terrible. He's a terrible kid. 
And you see through one season of this documentary what football did. And and then they show you here he is five, six, seven years later, and he's a productive member of society with a whole different outlook on life. And it was because of football and because that football coach and that football program didn't give up on him. And so we can talk about CTE and all the bad things that go along with football, but we need room to talk about the good stuff. And there's been a hostility co- uh, created through the progressive sports media that has come into the sports media world without ever spending any time as a high school reporter, trained as journalist, people that again have had no real connection to the culture of sports have just run in and dominated the conversation about sports and mistreat people that have actually spent 10, 15, 30, 40 years covering sports in a fair way they understand all of sports and they're beating up and i'm just going to keep it 100 percent real with you. they're beating up guys like peter king and scaring everybody else else off from writing anything positive about football and so we can't even tell the complete story of football anymore we can only talk about the negative because if you tell the positive you'll get shredded over twitter shredded in some blog and so it, it literally came to me, Peter, I, I'm just because I started putting all this together over the past few years. And it, it made I was like, now I get why Peter King was under this constant attack from just keeping it 100 percent real from Deadspin and this super pro- progressive media. It was like they got to kill the guy at the top in order to send the message to the rest of football writers. <laughs> if you don't get on board with what we want done. We'll, we did it to Peter King. We'll do it to you. And I say that in all seriousness, Peter. Yeah. You put the work in uh, as a cub reporter all the way through to build this great career. And we need someone like you at the top that has access to Roger Goodell and all the power, question them, write stories about them. And they don't all have to be uh, – Hatchet jobs or or tearing into people. We need the access that you had was serving all of us. Other people could play different roles. They don't all have to be insiders. But it was like Bob Woodward from the Washington Post became a Washington insider and a different journalist than what he was at the beginning of his career when he took down Nixon. There's nothing wrong. He... At one point, he played one role where he was right. hyper aggressive and try, and then it, as his uh, stature grew, he became a peer of political people. But he still has value because we need that insight. And so, again, you once were the young lion and went up and tore up the jungle. Now you're playing a different role. Let the other young lions come in and have a more adversarial relationship with the NFL. While you give us a different perspective, there's value in that. It's important because if the NFL doesn't feel like they have a place where their voice can be properly heard, they just start backing away from everybody and shut it down. And so I look at these young people in the media that don't understand we all have a role to play. All the roles are important. And so, but and now we have every, you can only do one thing. You can only shred and dump on the NFL and tear them down. And it's not right. It's not fair. It's not healthy. And just as a black person who understands the power of football and has seen it transform a lot of young black men, I just look at Kaepernick and all these guys, and I just wonder if they know how good football really as an industry has been for us and to us, again, it's created more wealth for black men than any other industry I've known. And to me, more opportunity because, again, football, if you don't make it all the way to the NFL, at least you have a chance to make it through college. And that opens up doors for me. Or let's say you don't go to college. Doesn't it help you in high school being on a team, having responsibility to the guy next to you on the line? I mean, Peter, I looked at when, when Baltimore was rioting after the Freddie Gray deal, the number one thing I, I saw all those kids out in the street. 
Right. And and I and I literally thought, man, when I was a kid, I was so tired from football practice. <laughs> no way I could be out in the street doing this. Literally. Yeah. 